Hi there, very good afternoon and welcome to another exciting episode of The Nation. I am Jessie Chahel and today we address an issue that concerns all of us, an issue that is something we all really need to be much more aware about and that is road safety and rescue and in the studio today i have a safety activist an expert on uh, this particular topic i have with me captain bala captain welcome yeah, to you? the show yeah. how are you good excellent i feel very safe that you're around <laughs> to know that in case of any kind of emergency uh, we have that covered um now captain perhaps you can share a little bit uh, with us uh, you founded uh, and also now uh, at the moment you're the president of the Road Safety Marshal uh, Club. What really uh, does the association do? Road Safety Marshal Club was, uh, it's not a bikers club. Okay. Many people think it's a bikers club. It's okay. actually a road users club where we will uh, recruit people to do uh, safety intervention. So it's, until today we have donated more than 6,000 motorcycle helmet to children who pillion riding to school. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, 19 people die in a road accident every day. Every day. Every day. And head injury is a common cause of, leading cause of death. So the only way we can tackle this issue is by knowledge, skill and facility. So we give them the knowledge of how to wear the helmet properly. Mm -hmm. The one finger rule, because most of the people don't know how to wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. They put on the helmet, the strap is still loose. So when they fall, the strap become the, the harness become the injury. So the helmet start to pull the neck. And they will cause a cervical injury. Right. So we train the children how to wear helmet. Then we give them the skill how to put it on, and so they they don't, de they don't depend on somebody. And we give them the helmet. So a lot of corporate company like Genting, Allianz Insurance, Nissan, Sime Derby came for responses to give free helmets. So corporate company support uh, Road Safety Marshal Club to give away free helmets. We also give free wheelchairs. RSMC have donated wheelchairs to all the traffic police station whole Malaysia. 157 wheelchairs were donated. Mm -hmm. All these wheelchairs were stationed in the police station, traffic police station, is because one day when I went to the police station, I realized that people are limping out because of minor injury. And then I saw a pregnant lady walking in and out of because a car involved in an accident. So I realized the wheelchair there will help them to reduce the kind of impact so that at least they, they can mobile. I saw elderly people in the police station. So RSMC look into problems that we can tackle. Mm -hmm. Like one of our uh, latest uh, program is... Uh, uh, the glow campaign the glow campaign is like because a lot of lorry was parked along the roadside mm -hmm. because of uh, breakdown and things like that of course the law says that they must have that that uh, reflective sticker the reflective sti sticker plays a part when a car like hit the reflective sticker but today we come up with this glow in the dark that means the moment the, the, the vehicle was shut down left at the roadside idly, idly parked there this glow in the dark will glow so at least the motorcyclists or motorists who comes there approaching there which their lights are very low or uh, a, a bit thin, they can actually see the glowing vehicle parked along the roadside. Mm -hmm. This is our latest project. To give them a mm -hmm. heads up. Uh, and so you know. RSMC give free stickers to, uh, uh, four stickers that we develop. One is for the uh, hearing aid problem. You know? Those people who can't hear. So we put a sticker of the hearing uh, warning. Mm -hmm. And then we also give free sticker for handicap. Uh, drivers so that the people don't park very close to them mm -hmm. because people always say if you put a handicap sticker there at the back there then people may just take advantage of me may rob me or what it's not true sometimes uh, you see when you have a handicap sticker then only you can park in a handicap uh, allocated place right number two is that when you have a handicap sticker on the car that shows people shouldn't park very close to them because they need space to open the door and go inside and open the boot at the back there to put their wheelchairs. But we see that happening a lot of times. That's the thing. <laughs> That's why we need a lot of education. We don't want to blame the public because people say, I don't know. And some people say, Bala, why do we have a sticker of a pregnant woman in the car? Mm -hmm. That shows your car must keep at least two cars away from the car. But just because, let's say the traffic light change rate and a car stop and there is a sticker of a pregnant lady at the back mm -hmm. you need to keep your car away from her because if just in case there's another car ram on you your car will not ram the front car and she will not ram another car and the airbag deployed that's right and that's so the that's reason the why impact. we have the sticker at the back and then there's a sticker about child on board people still ask me why do we need to put the child on board at the, at the back because when you have a child inside a car sometimes you put a car seat sometimes you do not have a car seat when the car ram you hit your child may just fall and get a neck injury and other injuries. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason the sticker is to tell you to keep away from this car because this car has some kind of uh, lack of uh, 
instrument to protect the people. Mm -hmm. Well, so we have all these rules that are there for a certain purpose and mm. that needs to be highlighted perhaps even more. Precisely. Um, and, and what your association has, has done uh, up to, to date, I think is uh, amazing because you're trying to fill in those gaps and I think yeah. we still have a long way to go where that's concerned. So thank you for doing that. But today we want to talk about road accidents, uh, okay. if you want to start off this conversation with road accidents and why are there so many accidents, like you mentioned earlier, about 19 to 20 people die daily uh, because of road accidents. Um, and an average Malaysian spends about three to four hours on the road every day. And that's, of course, putting us at very high risk. So what really is causing all these accidents? I would say that inexperienced drivers, road condition, we always say the three M factor, man, machinery, maintenance. Okay. If you, the man who sit in the vehicle is not properly trained, we always go to the car driving in school to, to complete the driving school to get a license. That is a wrong perception. So I want the listeners to encourage their children not only to take the 20 hours or 18 hours suggested, mm -hmm. but go beyond that to make sure their family members are well trained. It's not going for license, going to be a good driver. And you must set the example. You see, when we sit inside the car, we should set the rules being a pilot of the vehicle we should tell them okay you have to put this this, this because i'm going to drive anything can happen so we hold a full responsibility so the malaysian should start to change as the country develop we have to develop the people as well that's right so we need to encourage them if like you see we have a lot of big bikers involved in an accident lately because the bikes are getting cheaper people can afford they said okay i just buy a big bike and ride no they have to go for a tutorial ride they have to ride with somebody who got an experience. That's why there's a lot of bikers clubs, car clubs. Join them. And the car clubs shouldn't do like only activities like uh, recreational, traveling, convoy. That's not what we want. Or we racing. want them to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see, say for example, the MyV Owners Club. When you bought a MyV, you join a MyV Owners Club. The MyV Owners Club should train you about the best of MyV. The Nissan should train the best of Nissan. The Toyota should train the best of Toyota. What the vehicle so is what the vehicle of. capable of protecting you and how you can enjoy the driving. Mm -hmm. So that's what. And then the club also will protect their, their members. Okay, if you're in Ipoh, contact our members in Ipoh. If your car breaks down. So this become a very good network for to protect them. Mm -hmm. So the, the training is important. Training is like cycling. You stop, you fall. Mm -hmm. So you need to regularly train. Corporate companies should spend money to spend money to protect their staff because eight hours they spend in the office. Yes. The rest four hours they're going to spend on the road and uh, maybe another four hours of recreational, eight hours at home. But the four hours on the road is a nightmare for them. So I, I train, I groom up the staff and I send them outside on the way back to office, the staff involved in an accident. Tomorrow they go and come to work. So it's a loss prevention. So the corporate company must play a part by training and educating the staff. Mm -hmm. Send them for a skilled driving, skilled riding. Mm -hmm. If they're dispatched, they need to be properly trained how to handle the bike and then make sure so that we don't have problem of losing the stuff mm -hmm. or losing their working hours. Mm -hmm. So it's not just uh, you know uh, one person's role. I think everybody has everybody to must come together part, correct, to, play, yeah. to play a part. Um, back to road accidents now. Festive seasons, we see there is of course a surge in uh, road accidents. Perhaps you could share some examples of how we can prevent those accidents during this uh, you know, very uh, festive times. Of course, those days where we always look at, the, we put the blame on the heavy vehicle. We say the presence of heavy vehicle will cause accidents. So we remove the heavy vehicle from the road. That make the road very clear. Now we have all the clear roads for the people to go on their speed they yeah, want. Yeah. So this is another issue. You look at it, the positive and the negative. When you have the heavy vehicle on the road, the vehicle becomes slow. So the speed has reduced. This somehow or other become very good intervention. So when we remove the big heavy vehicle, the road are clear, people can speed. But who are we looking at these people who's driving during the festive season? The festive season, the normal drivers who usually drive, drive like four to eight kilometers every day to school, a teacher go to school, you know. Today, the teacher is going to travel 200 kilometers to Bale Kampung. So when you spend 200 kilometers and you are not a competent driver and you are not using the road regularly, you have to be extra, extra careful. Mm -hmm. That's where the plus have lay by and rumare hard and all these places. And during the festive season, they put more security is there so that nobody take advantage of you or you know or the yeah. situation. Nevertheless, the public take the opportunity to find ways to cut costs. And also, they say, okay, I'm not a regular traveler, but 
the toll concessional give discount only at night mm. which is not a good idea when you give the discount at night the public tends to wait until 12 o'clock they hit the road and they're not a regular driver now they're driving at night and they're going to drive long distance so this is asking for trouble mm-hmm. for a little money that you could save you are actually endangering your whole family That's and right. you see i have interviewed a few people when i do road advocacy with the road safety department some of them told me that they put their children to bed in the car okay. that is totally a big nightmare you people cannot sleep it's not a bed when you sit inside the car you should be alert the person in who's alert can survive better than the person who's sleeping in the car mm-hmm. so when they put the kids all to bed and wait for the toll to reach 12 o'clock then they can hit the road so they can get the they can enjoy the 10 20% discount and then they reach the destination and they become very tired especially fasting man almost hari raya people tends to become very tired after fasting and then they start to eat uh, buka puasa then they become very tired after eat mm-hmm. so and they give them this at night these are all contributing factor mm-hmm. so i said we have to look into this problem and we as a user have to think about it we don't blame the other third party oh they are giving discount so i go at night that's not the reason we need to know okay we are not a good driver i have a short sighted i have a long sighted so i have to be careful so they have to identify their handicaps in them right and plan their journey properly it's okay this to goes. take breaks it's Correct. okay to take your time to yeah. reach your destination the more you stop that's why the rumor rehat today they have a playground and all this let your children play for a while so they will be alert they will be a bit hyper and once they get inside the car okay they are still alert mm-hmm. so i make another 30 km then take a break so i plan my journey maybe when i reach i want to go to uh, penang so i reach uh, uh, bido i take the old road for a while because from the old road i can see a few nice scenery they come back to the toll again you see we are not hitting that okay i need to reach the destination so i always tell my bikers who ride the big bikes i told them enjoy the journey not reaching out the destination, destination. Yeah. Mm. Um that's all that, that's so where festive seasons are concerned but what about times when it's a uh, rainy season as well. Uh you know we Malaysians we have rain every time but whenever there's rain we always seem to get ourselves in a bit of uh, trouble on the road as well. So uh, what are the preemptive me- me- measures there? The the vision will be very low during rainy days. So we need to know if it is heavy rain and we really cannot see we have to find ways to pull over. Mm-hmm. And safe pull over is also important. So if let's say the weather is getting bad and I know I'm going to reach out 30 km to the destination that's why planning comes back to the the bigger picture mm-hmm. so they need to find a way that they can actually pull over or stop by mm-hmm. or postpone their uh, journey mm-hmm. because if they're taking the risk especially if they know I'm going to pass by this road say for example KL I want to pass by Shah Putra and this rainy days roughly you already know that this place this places will be flooded and it's going to cause a massive jam so try to take a longer road that can reach there rather than pass through that uh, the bad uh, uh, flooding zone mm-hmm. and then uh, a lot of 4x4 drivers will take advantage because they said i'm driving a 4x4 i can actually go through flood in all these kind of and terrain and i can go fast even yeah. though it's raining because i have that's a stable car correct that's not true yeah. you see when you're speeding on the on the rainy days your tires are actually floating it's not touching the ground the faster you move the higher your your float level mm-hmm. especially when you're driving different type of tires like all terrain mud terrain or highway terrain or road terrain if it is a mud terrain you can go through the muddy zone but if you're using a highway terrain or road terrain it's same like you're driving a normal car so people must understand all that that's why it's not by just putting something on the vehicle to meddle the car but please try to google and find out what is this why do i need to do this ask more question when you go change your tire change battery ask more questions be informed Correct, whether yeah. whether you are you know the the principal driver or you are uh, you know the wife or the brother or sister whoever else who may be driving the vehicle uh, you know always make sure that you are also in the know uh, about how to handle the vehicle especially in time uh, of of an emergency what do you have to say to those who like to zoop up the car modify the car so you can you know go faster take better corners um different kind of lightings that they'll have at night uh, that's all quite uh, distracting isn't it uh i'm i don't against technology i don't against people who want to show their creativity or their talents you know and all this because we cannot restrict their talent people can modify but nevertheless they do not disturb the original uh safety standards that already created by the car mm-hmm. you can have more standards say for example like helmets we say we must have serim approof serim approof helmet can be used for a motorcyclist but also a uh, uka standard or snell snell is a very high standard 
Uh, so we cannot say, oh, if your helmet don't have a serum, we have to confiscate helmet. No such thing. If you have a SNAIL standard or UCA standard, which is higher than the serum standard, it's okay mm -hmm. because they are willing to pay for the safety. So that's why people don't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So if they modify their vehicle, they can actually check with JPJ first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this, this, this to my vehicle. Will it be a, a, a problem and things like that? Same like the tinted glass also. Yeah. When you tinted your glass, if the tin is not good, that will blind you during a rainy days. So when the JPJ enforce the tinted glass, uh, some people are not happy. But I always tell people that if when the police pursuit, the police want to see who is inside and they cannot see you, they will start to visualize how dangerous is that for me to approach. So that's why the original tinted is good enough for an enforcement officer to see inside what you're doing. And you put all black glasses and you get your children to sit inside, they can't see anything, they can't enjoy the view. They're going to fall asleep or they're going to be very restless or do something else and running here and there inside the car. Yeah. So all this is coming back to the attitude of a people, you know. I didn't say you cannot modify your car, but you can modify according to the specs is allowed. Mm -hmm. And then if you, let's say you have some creative ideas to implement, you can actually suggest to the road transport department. Or you can even forward it to the Road Safety Marshal Club. We can bring it to the Road Safety Council for a forum to discuss. Mm -hmm. Because everybody just become a pen hero, just write whatever they want on a Facebook for the sake of letting go the anger. No, please come forward. There is a meeting every year by the Road Safety Council where you can suggest anything that you want, anything that you're not happy with. And then this will be discussed in the forum. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. <coughs> we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll still be in conversation with Captain Bala, who is a safety activist regarding everything um, safety. And we've got some of these products uh, to, sh to showcase as well. So do stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's not because I like to travel. I travel so I can say this, what you're looking for is inside of you and you should be in peace. Tim Rawat has been traveling for 40 years, inspiring people around the world to find peace within. I go and I talk to people and I present them with the possibility of themselves discover the peace that lies within you. Kavita, Meling, dah set ke belum? Sikit je lagi, Puan. Apa menu kita hari ni? Semua menu sehat. Ikan bakar, su ayam, sayur-sayuran. Banyaklah. Puan, banyaknya guna minyak. Bahayakan kesihatan lah. Betul lah macam ni. Saya dah kurangkan separuh dia biasa ni. Cuba rasa ni. Sedap tak? Hmm. Biar kurang masin, jangan lebih. Betul tu. Kita kena kurangkan minyak, gula, garam dan santan dalam masakan. Barulah ramai pelanggan datang ke kedai kita. Semua, Semua ni sihat belaka. Menyelami realiti. Menjejaki masa. Meninjau peristiwa. Paparan kronikal kembara kehidupan. Pelbagai keunikan juga pengalaman menarik segalanya disorotkan selama setengah jam dalam channel bernama setiap Ahad jam 9.30 malam hanya di Bernama TV There. Welcome back to The Nation. I'm Jessie Chahel and in the studio with me today is Captain Bala who's a safety activist and we are discussing about road safety. I want to go into road rage and uh, basically how uh, you can be safe on the road. Um, now Bala, we, before the break uh, we were talking a little bit about accidents and how to prevent them from happening. Uh, but now let's talk about what happens in the event uh, one is in an accident. What do you do? Because you are in shock and you are in panic at that point in time as well. Okay, when you know you are involved in an accident and it's happened without, uh, uh, without any warning mm -hmm. and you first check yourself, are you okay or not? Can you move your hands, arms, everything okay? Try to get out of the vehicle, alright? Look at the rearview mirror, everything and try to get out of the vehicle. Most of the time when you are involved in an accident, a crash impact, the engine will crash your patella, your kneecap. So you will pin down inside, you cannot move out. What you do, you adjust your seat. 
the seat adjustment got three type one is the side lever where mm-hmm. you have to press it aside yep. the other one is a center lever yep. that you need to go to underneath to push the your push, push your chair outside uh, to the back and then uh, the other one is auto of course the the side lever sometimes the cable will bend when the cable bend it cannot move the center lever when the engine crush the patella you have very little space to put your hand inside you may not be able to free yourself when it comes to auto is very good because even you off the engine you throw the key you still can adjust because it's connected direct to the battery the problem starts is when involved in an accident the 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 key uh the battery panel the the clip will come up mm-hmm. then it won't work so if let's say you're stuck inside try to squeeze yourself out cannot and some people come there to help you what you need to do is ask the people that standing there to help you to get a car jack behind your car your car jack is the best rescue tools usually a car that comes with a uh, scissors jack uh-huh. the scissors jack when you flip it in it become 4 inches slot it in between and twist it open so if let's say you are traveling with your wife you involved in an accident your wife pin down inside you manage to get out and you can't adjust the seat to pull out your wife go behind the car get a car jack slot it in between and open it the jack will actually push the 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 gap between the engine uh, uh, compartment and the engine uh, the crush your patella mm-hmm. to the seat give you more space give you more space to go out mm-hmm. so try to do something to bring the person out because if the person can mobile okay if the person cannot move they say they can't move the neck they can't move anywhere they most probably they have my they have a cervical injury because of we plash and then they might have other backbone injuries and things like that mm-hmm. you need a catheter device and other device which is usually carried by the ambulance mm-hmm. ambulance and fire trucks mm-hmm. so if the person can mobile try to get out as fast as you can mm-hmm. because we scared the car will catch fire all right there is a possibility of car catch fire after the accident and then uh, if let's say uh, if your car overturn you'll be hanging upside down and your seat belt jam usually the seat belt will jam because your body is hanging on the seat belt mm-hmm. the seat belts in the car uh is 10 feet so when the car overturn you will lock the seat belt right. and you can't escape so in your car key you must always have something to escape you see this is my car key i have a rescue hammer here okay this rescue tool is very tiny during an emergency you just need to pull it out and see your seat belt will be tight like this right. zika can you hold for me right. so you just need to just cut the seat belts okay so that fast and even your like children play with it yeah they may not cut their finger or injure themselves this is the blade is protected so you just need to cut the seat belts and snap this thing into the glass when you push it maximum it give you 12 pound punch to break the glass wow and there is a trigger spring here to break the glass for you to escape so a corporate company who does give dog gift to the staff they should give this dog gift and train the staff it's not just by giving them they uh, they they have done their job but right. you know sometimes your friend bought a new car then they say hey bala i just bought a new car you want to give them something as a gift give them life hammer this is all life hammer can save your life see this is a life hammer you can cut the seat belts okay during an emergency you can break a glass anything that sharp like this can break a glass okay so you just break, hit yeah, it yeah hit the glass mm-hmm. and the best part is all these kind of gadgets you can see all kind of patterns and design of this tao life hammer it comes with a torch light to wave down if yes. you need yes some ladies will ask me bala if i buy this uh what is the use of the torch light i say can you repair your car sometimes you open your boot uh, you want to repair your you pick up something you want somebody to hold the torch light you don't need to hold there's a magnet just stuff it there it stays there so it's all designed for your own safety is it this one can uh. also get attention in case it can make a yes make a you sound. can use it during emergency accident wave you know and it comes with a blinker mm-hmm. these are blinkers you actually wave down traffic you know you can ask for help or you can put it on top of your car if your car break down you know and the best part is comes to the siren like this siren so what is the best part is, the best part of this life hammer is that when you're driving suddenly you got stroke fast face drop one side okay arms cannot lift up speech cannot you want to scream for help you can't scream because your mouth slanting one side face arm speech time time is your biggest enemy who's going to help you but one hand still can work but one side only you stroke yeah. so you can still grab this turn on the light turn on the siren wind down the window and put it outside and the people who happen to pass by will see there is a sound coming out there Call and you know there's help. a light maybe they will respond to the kind of situation mm-hmm. so so this our thing is good so i always encourage people to have something inside the car to 
to to make it safe you know mm-hmm. like blinker like traffic cone i always encourage people to have towel inside the car mm-hmm. uh, they this is bala is very weird to keep a towel inside the car i said you have a bolster which you always carry inside a car for children to dress you know yeah. hug you just remove the bolster and put a towel inside because this towel is a thousand and one ways to save people you can be a cervical collar you can be a bandage if you got cuts or injury you have been rob you got bleeding you can use to do stop bleeding you pick up your daughter after school she's so wet you don't have hypothermia blanket inside your car your towel is a good hypothermia blanket so if you got burns you can you know or you saw an accident you want to go down and out you got towel to give it to people your husband went and changed tire so wet once he get into the car he's going to get cold so give it to him a towel so towel pill plays an important role so you can hide the towel in the small bowl that came inside there, mm-hmm. and they will play a very important role during an emergency mm-hmm. and another tip you shared earlier is if your car is stalled and you need help you can actually take your cd yeah. and use it as a reflector correct because you see people don't they have a triangle sign they put a triangle sign sometime you left your triangle sign somebody will steal your triangle sign <laughs> so now you see i left my car and you said people say bala i don't have a triangle sign in my car because i bought the car that time it was a second hand so when break down i just break a break a branch i just stick it into my boot that's a wrong method sticking is something onto the boot you will actually jerk out like that and when a motorcycle come you going to get injured so my so you take this three branch and arrange it before the car so at least they, the motorcyclists come will see the three branch first before your car all right because a rider who ride like 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers with the same speed he find that your car that ideally parked there is moving mm-hmm. that's why you can see they just ram at the back mm-hmm. so they can keep a cone traffic cone like this this is how traffic cone you can buy from the shop i always encourage people to have three cone because when you have three cone you can actually arrange it nicely one two three so the slow lane you arrange it uh, uh accordingly mm-hmm. if it is a f- uh, in the middle lane then you need to arrange one two three so that the car will know you are diverted to the left and right right uh, and then you see even the cone has gone into this small mm-hmm. this Tell is a traffic cone this one okay yeah you just need to press it and let's say you see I, when i ride my bike uh i scared some of my rider fell down i always prepared so because I, in the motorcycle i cannot carry a cone like this so i carry this type of cone maybe three pieces like this mm-hmm. so during an emergency let's say my bike has fell in the middle of the road when i get down i want to go down and put a cone so that they won't hit my biker's bike or fall down how am i going to reach there because the cars are speeding on the highway so yep. yeah i just need to press this button and throw this and this thing will roll and drop down there and this will become a blinker mm-hmm. so this plays an important role you know and it comes with many patterns you can just change the and it also has a design. magnet yeah. right correct it yeah and your that. car can go through this one is you won't damage the traffic cone mm-hmm. so those corporate company that they giving away dog gifts mm-hmm. i know all the corporate company give dog gifts you know pens, they, they love yeah, their dogs stuff and this and pens, that yeah mugs i went to my friend's wedding he he told me bala my my company give me umbrella every year <laughs> so they got 10 umbrellas you know for the 10 years you're working there so so i always <laughs> encourage the corporate company give different different thing maybe the first year give umbrella second year you give a uh, towel you know to keep in the car maybe a traffic cone maybe a life hammer and then you know the series of things that important a fire extinguisher first aid kit you know mm-hmm. and please don't buy the cheap thing and give it to people when you are to give something compatri quotation buy the most expensive thing cheap thing no good good thing not cheap we yeah. want to give something we want to appreciate our stuff why are we looking for the cheapest thing that's how we value our stuff so i encourage these people you know sometimes my friends say my my daughter got a driving license so i want to buy something for her. so i told him go and get a good one mm-hmm. get everything good one and medal her and it's not just giving to her but educate her tell her what to use how to use when to use and things like that so i think i think you hit the nail on the head there the education uh, which of course will lead to the awareness as well Correct. is a it plays a big big role it's not so much about how you mentioned earlier about getting a li- your driving license and and being okay now i can be on the road you know but it's about the training and the constant training even though you've been driving for 5 years you need a refresher right. uh, there are new scams and tactics now uh, in terms of crime that's on the road that we now need to be more aware of as well and uh, just that we'll take a quick break but when we come back we'll be talking about road crime and how to be aware uh, of that so stay tuned we'll be right back
lines, illuminating visuals, everything right and now on Bernama News. Sedar tak kita tuan-tuan dan perempuan keadaan iklim yang tak menentu sekarang ni? Perubahan iklim meningkatkan kejadian kemarau, derebu, banjir dan ia menyumbang kepada perubahan iklim yang berlaku secara drastik. Inilah dia faktor-faktornya. Yang pertama, asap dari kenderaan. Yang kedua, penerbangan dan pembakaran hutan. Yang ketiga, pembebasan asap dari industri perkilangan. Dan yang keempat, pelupusan sisa buangan. Ah, ini usaha yang Pak Abu buat. Iaitu yang pertama, menanam pokok. Yang kedua, mengurangkan atau tidak menggunakan beg plastik. Yang ketiga, mengasingkan bahan buangan. Yang keempat, mengita semula bahan buangan. Dan yang kelima, memilih barangan dari bahan kita semula. Ada banyak lagi usaha yang boleh kita lakukan. Antaranya, kurangkan pemanduan kereta persendirian dan banyakkan penggunaan kenderaan awam. Anda adalah sebahagian daripada penyelesaiannya. Menungkah panasan masa. Mengupas isu semasa. Jadi saluran pelbagai suara. Segalanya baru dan benar di Berita Bernama TV. Hi there, thanks for joining us and you're watching The Nation with me, Jessie Shahel, and in the studio with me is safety activist Captain Bala, uh, who's also the president and founder of the Road Safety Marshal Club. And you can find out more uh, at their website, www.rsmc.org. Uh, my where a, a lot of information is uh, has been made available now we were talking before the break about um, road safety of course uh, which has led us into the topic of road rage or road crime what are the currently because they keep having new tactics but what is currently the one that we should watch out for uh, they have to be careful when they go to lay by you know uh, especially the pull over to lay by for a cup of tea or toilet and things like that uh, try to on uh, once you leave the car you just turn on your hazard light mm -hmm. and uh, that will deter them a little bit they think that they, they they scared to go near your car because your car lights are still blinking rather than you just leave your car and go and then they just watch your left uh, you know they go and puncture your tire mm -hmm. they just remove the cab and put a small stone there they close it back so you will so naturally you won't have an immediate puncture but after you travel some time then uh, the car tire will become flat then they offer to change the tire, uh, they offer you to bring this tire to another place and things like that. And usually when these people who come there to help you in the, when your car breaks down, you shouldn't accept help from them. But you know, most of the time they, they project like they are kind to help. You have to be careful with the person that you talk to and the person who is around you. Because one person will be talking to you, distract you, the other people will do the crime. They may even puncture the bigger, uh, the other side of the vehicle and things like that. I always encourage the 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 people make sure your vehicle is competent i mean your, your your vehicle is prepared for the kind of journey and then you always have a contact you know, join the clubs like am mm. or even your insurance company provide you free towing service mm -hmm. and uh, some of these uh, uh, car clubs give you support so keep their numbers as your emergency numbers mm -hmm. and don't store it in your phone because sometimes your phone is flat mm -hmm. and always have a charger inside your car you can always top up once you go 50 percent just charge it up so yeah. that you can emergency you can so prepare preparedness are very important for the women drivers you know um, i saw a lot of people giving tips that put their hand back this side putting your hand back this side or that side doesn't make a difference i have a girl in ipo where she was advised to put a hand back here and the perpetrator actually attacked from this side and the glass went into the eyes oh dear. so when you put your hand back here they break from this side when you put a hand back that side they break from that side what when they break from that side the glass doesn't reach you but when they break from this side the glass reach you okay a few years back, Dato Sri Shamudin launched this product called Snatch Guard. Mm -hmm. The Snatch Guard is not a product to, to make money, but it is a it is a intervention product. I'm the one who invented this. Uh, this this TFT taffeta is uh, something very interesting about this cloth. It does not reflect to tempered glass. So you can fix this cable underneath your seat 
and this cable will go through this hole and you can fix this it's like uh, a bicycle carabiner. lock yes yep. all you need to do when you get into the car you just need to lock your handbag into this uh carabiner put it on the floor and cover with this cloth and your handbag cannot be seen so 26000 pieces distributed okay and we only have two case study came back and the two case study really satisfy me okay what because the girl told me that uh, she was driving and she put the handbag down there she covered with this tft taffeta a motorcyclist came look inside the car smile to her and just go in front break another glass and took the handbag that means he's eyeing for the handbag but he couldn't get the handbag the second case study was in uh, Satya Wangsa. This girl said uh, she actually spotted the guy in the petrol station uh, looking at her handbag. So she immediately became alert. She said ever since the company bought for her this, mm -hmm. uh, because the company bought for the staff, you know, many companies like Petronas and all these, they bought for their staff. This girl said ever since the company bought for her, she never used it. She only used the cloth for cover. She don't lock it. But that day, she said she locked it. And then, true enough, after she left the petrol station, she reached at the Satya Wangsa Junction, traffic light. She was waiting there. Within a split second, the motorbike came. She said it was a young boy, like 15, 16 years old boy, break the glass and jump into the car. Mm. And asking her, where's the handbag? The handbag was down there. And then the guy who was ransacking took an iPhone and then immediately grabbed the phone. I grabbed the bag. Push away the cloth and take the bag. He get inside the bike, ask the front rider to go without looking at the cable that connected. So the guy was thrown back and the public around the perimeter actually caught the man. So this was very good. So these two things as I, I invented this gadget uh, and I don't do so much of publicity uh, ever since it's uh, invented because I don't want people so much to know about this thing because uh, when they know they are prepared for a better crime. That's right. And then um, I'm also very particular because this is a case study product. Uh, I have interviewed a girl who got 14 times handbag snatch in Ipoh. My goodness. So she said, she, she told me the last handbag snatch she got, she even know the guy is going to snatch her back. She said, how many times go to the police station, go to the Pandavtara and get the IC, you know. She says, a nightmare. Of course. So she told me that, she said, I wish that I have a hand, mm. a big arms fixed in my car, holding my handbag. So that you can, when people pull, it cannot come out. So that's how I got an idea from her. So I actually convert that the idea. hand part into the cable and things like that. Where is this available? If um, if uh, they can actually buy from our club okay. because uh, it's sold at thirty nine ringgit mm -hmm. uh, because we don't make much profit. It's only twenty cent profit because it's a case study product. So we of course a lot of corporate company now give away as a dog gift. Uh, I remember Toyota, Nissan give away as their uh, promotional item. Allianz give as a promotional items mm -hmm. because uh, this is good to to you know. By just telling your staff, okay, be safe, be safe, we, we don't give them, we give them knowledge, but we give them the skill, but we didn't give them the facility. Mm -hmm. So if they have a handbag snatch, they don't come to work. If they don't come to work, then they lost their working hours. Sure. And then those people who go handbag snatch, they go to stress. That's right. Because they need to go into IC, they got to take leave. So you're going to damage five, six days of your staff and they still come back to work like that. So by myself, get them prepared. Absolutely. Give them training and give them something to protect themselves. The knowledge, the skill and the facility. Right, yeah. Now, for those who are driving late at night as well, that also is another huge concern in terms of how to be safe. Um, you know, and especially those who finish work late or maybe those who, for example, like you uh, gave the example of someone uh, trying to fill up fuel at the petrol station. Uh, a, a mother with children in the car driving home late at night could be also very afraid. Uh, a single person driving home also. So what are the few things things to keep out for to ensure that you're always safe on the road three years ago i invented this snatch guard last year i invented a stalker guard stalker guard a okay. stalker guard is a cardboard with a human figure it's about two feet length you can keep behind your car seat when you're driving alone all you need to do is just pick out this play card just fix it on your handrail it looks like someone sitting next to you when you're driving Okay. So when the person follow you will realize there's a man sitting next to it. I didn't bring it here to show it to the public because I don't want it to be something that people will see it and they know is is a fake. Right. Uh, so we just launched it last year on the Women's Street Crime Awareness Campaign, mm -hmm. and until today we've given out quite a lot, you know. So of course now is the corporate company sponsorship. We give what free. 
So they can actually contact RSMC to get it. Okay. Uh, with a corporate sponsorship, we are trying to give out free the cardboard for the women driver who travel home late. Mm-hmm. I've given this to a, a lady friend, and she actually worked late, so she fixed it in the car. She drove back home, but she forgot to take it down. <laughs> so she went to bed, and the husband came after the morning shift, uh, night shift. Saw somebody sitting inside the car. He screamed and alerted the neighbor. So she was See, telling me it really know. works. <laughs> you know, so, it's effective, right? <laughs> yes, it's a it's a three D printed cardboard. Mm-hmm. You can keep inside your car. Mm-hmm. So if, let's say your wife travel alone at night, you can actually tell her just fix it, and then she can just drive out from the basement. Mm-hmm. So it's like somebody sitting. It's just a half cardboard. I think that's that's absolutely brilliant. I yeah. I definitely must get one for myself yeah. as well. Um, let's look at child safety now. Um, this you were sharing with us earlier as well is really important uh, to have uh, in the car, especially when you have your child strapped on. Yeah. Right. You see, a child booster seat is good. Child seat is good. Uh, I always tell the parents uh, take your children to buy your child seat because uh, if let's say your budget is hundred and fifty ringgit, you bring it to. some mall and show it to them okay i'm going to let you choose which one you want they will sit on it but if you just buy one and fix it and ask them to sit they won't sit and always make it very personal for children when you buy a child seat they like certain character like minions or whatever mm-hmm. just buy some sticker and add it on and then put some name on it the sense of belonging yeah. like when i bought a helmet for my niece i actually let them choose the color and i actually let them put their names on it So they feel that sense of belonging. This is my Mine. helmet, and I have to wear it. That's and then, uh, when uh, there's a lot of insurance company giving child booster seat for free, Allianz give free child seat booster for all the the car people who renew their uh, policies and things. And they also give away free child seats uh, during the intervention. What uh, road safety advocacy? Mm-hmm. You see, uh, when they have a child booster seat in their car, the seat belt plays an important role. So when the the child seat uh they don't have a child booster seat the child will be sitting very low and the belt will be in near the face here so when the accident took place this will cause injury so what happened is that when they put a child booster seat the child will sit higher like adults and then they have the belt here on on the on the shoulder mm-hmm. and the the seat belt is very sharp so when the accident took place the seat belt will cause an injury so what happened is that they can actually put a child seat protector with the protector it will cushion the child because the skin is very soft and then the best part is about this uh, the the uh, the this type of foam if let's say they don't want to buy they don't want to spend money they can actually diy they can just take their child old clothes with the cartoon characters just roll it around the seat belts mm-hmm. or even a good morning towel or mm-hmm. uh, maybe a colorful towel you know just Anything wrap around with a soft yes uh, that's texture. when the child uh, when the uh, when they apply emergency brake the seat belt will actually won't damage won't cause injury to the child mm-hmm. now in terms of you know when when an accident happens of course and and their children involve or in fact pets what is the number one thing uh, that needs to be done immediately you mean the pets yeah whether it's a, you know those who can't help themselves like children yeah. or of if you even some people are carrying pets in the yeah. car they have a, they must have a pet cage when when they travel but even the pet cage also depends on the 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 breed of the dog and they must be properly harnessed the 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 pet cage pet cage so usually this our thing is mostly available in the in the website the information is available in the website some they just leave their pet inside they have to keep the pets together mm-hmm. when they are inside a vehicle because it's just sudden emergency break the pets especially the small breed the injury will be greater mm-hmm. because they will become for flying object also sometimes when we transporting our pets whether it's you know uh, hamsters or 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 a little um, you know a, a cat or dog anything uh, we don't put it in a cage that's and so right. they are running around in the right. car also being a source of distraction flying object that's why we do encourage people to put perfume bottle inside a car so because uh, when you put a perfume bottle or you stick something on the dashboard when the accident happen all these become flying object some people hang something on the glass cannot you mean the side the rear view mirror cannot when the accident took place you hang a cd the cd will cut your face so you cannot hang anything inside a car this is not a show showcase or what it's a car yeah. so it's going to overturn it's going to fly things you know yeah. so make sure everything in tech yeah so if yeah. you want to put something everything in the boot and then if it is a live animals and everything you put make sure next to you fasten it strap it or net it you know some they have net you can actually net and strap it what are the key essentials that one needs to have in the car first aid kit 
first aid kit fire extinguisher are very important mm-hmm. carrying a fire extinguisher itself is not good enough but you make sure the fire extinguisher is serum approved use for a vehicle and it should be uh, just a 1 kg or 2 kg is good enough you don't need a huge fire extinguisher and make sure you should be able to know how to use it rsmc do free training for car drivers to learn fire extinguisher okay you know? that's great and then um uh life ammo is important torch light when they have torch light don't need to buy a very bright torch light because a bright torch light will blind people so you want to go and help somebody or are you doing a traffic diversion and the traffic diversion is very bright so the peep the oncoming vehicle will have a distraction so the vehicle should be using a very little light to divert traffic so people may get get it wrong they say i got a bright torch light is good mm. no bright torch light is not good for traffic diversion that's why we see the blinker all this is just a little bling on it so in the dark you can actually yeah. still pick it up and for the for the drivers who like uh, travel uh, high risk drivers like traveling at night you know pepper spray will be good for them to keep in the car and for ladies as well that's right yeah. um but they say how do i reach out for the pepper spray immediately because when something happens you don't have enough time uh, to reach out for that okay you see pepper sprays when they buy they make sure buy a pepper spray made in us okay it's properly tested So because we want we don't want the ingredient to cause blindness. That's why the police control. So make sure they have police approval and it's a US made pepper spray. How do I know it's a US made pepper spray? Just Google. Okay. Check whether is it really made in US the brand you know. And the expiry will last you like 4 to 5 years. And buy a water base. And for ladies who carry a pepper spray, buy the one the pepper spray the ring at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Because the ring at the bottom most of the US made pepper spray the ring is will be at the bottom. So you keep in the car key. If there's an emergency, you don't need off the engine, you can just pull it out. Right, you can So you can it. use it. Okay. Right. Okay. And then uh, the pepper spray will jump about 10 feet so you don't need to go near to approach to the perpetrator. If let's say you go down, you want to speak to somebody and you are not confident, you want to carry a pepper spray, your last finger always goes inside here because if you accidentally panic and drop it, it stays inside the hand. All right. Okay. And usually this pepper spray won't blind your eyes. It will give you temporary irritation. Say for example somebody who get into my car. I don't want to spray on him I cannot reach him you just spray inside the car they cannot see it in the car and let's say I take this pepper spray spray on my Skin. hand shirt mm, mm. but not on my eyes huh just spray on my shirt they cannot kidnap me they cannot kidnap me so it works both way so this pepper spray carry all it is in capsicum you will cause irritation so it works both way if people chase you you don't need to turn and spray so you just spray on top the water base goes up will come down as a rain shower the back people So the pepper spray need trainings. Yes, that's uh, right. You need the adequate so training. So that's why you need to educate people. We need to tell them. When you tell them this is good, this how you use it, when you use it, people love to have it. Sure, absolutely. Right. Uh, well, on that note, we'll take a quick break and we will be back uh, very quickly uh, to uh, finalize our discussion today about uh, road safety and what you can do and how you can stay safe. So stay tuned, we'll be right back.
Berita Satu Bangsa Satu Malaysia Halo apa kabar pemirsa Salam dari Jakarta Sebuah program kerjasama kantor berita Indonesia Antara dengan kantor berita Malaysia Bernama kembali hadir menjumpai Anda Hi there, welcome back once again and you are watching The Nation with me, Jesse Chahel and in the studio with me, Captain Bala, who is a safety activist, also the president and founder of the Road Safety Marshal Club. You can find out much more information from rsmc.org. Dot my uh, and uh, some of the stuff that we actually had uh, showcased is also available uh, for purchase online. Um, now we have a slide coming up actually, and uh, this slide uh, showcases how sometimes we park the car, pull up our handbrake, uh, but not not well enough, yeah. right? And then what happens? Okay, you see, uh, sometimes when we uh, say, for example, your 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 house is uh, built in the slope mm -hmm. uh, so, or sometimes you're visiting a uh, people's wedding function or what you cannot find enough parking so you just park along the slope or uphill or downhill mm -hmm. uh, when you park your car uphill or downhill you pull your handbrake if the lady didn't pull the handbrake tight or if a driver or you know you know sometimes they find it is very hard to pull just pull halfway yeah. or they forgot to pull the vehicle will slide down mm. this is what happened yesterday near Masing Sungai Besi this lorry actually get down to check whether you have enough space to go but he forgot to pull the handbrake oh dear. and he rammed a few cars this happened yesterday so last year we have a school bus just slide down and when it upon kill a school child so you always remember when you park up ramp or down ramp downhill you stop the car you pull the handbrake you always turn your steering inside or outside so if you're parking your car uphill you stop you pull your handbrake your steering must turn out Turn, turn out to the That means right. your wheels are also at Yeah, the angle. wheels will be like that. So, just in case if the vehicle law, the brake doesn't malfunction, it will slide and hit the side. It will not ram down. So, same goes to downhill. When you park your car downhill, your steering must turn in. Mm -hmm. So, let's say your handbrake fail, you will hit the side. Mm -hmm. You won't ram down and kill you. Mm -hmm. If let's say a situation that you saw your car is coming down, mm -hmm. you don't go and stop because you are unable to hold on to it. And you go underneath. Mm -hmm. So let it go, but alert others. Tell them there's a car coming down. So at least people will be away from the. You know, uh, now we've spoken at length about what can be done to prevent an accident, uh, how we should be alert, how we need to be more educated, get the right kind of facilities. But what is it you would like to share with all our viewers today uh, regarding how they can be safe on the road? You see, the road belongs to the user. It doesn't belong to me or belongs to you or belongs to anybody. It belongs to the user. We all have to share the road. Uh, a frog can cross the road. They have their rights to cross the road. Because a snake can pass through the road. So we have to make sure that when we stop, it is safer for the other party, safer for the party in front. Mm -hmm. And we need to tolerate and anticipate. Defensive we, driving. Yes. And it is not like, okay, you know, uh, I, I need to be fast, you know, I need to... You always use the word I. What about we? What you're doing today will reflect to others. They also can do that. And when they do this to you, then you may not like it. So let's share the road and make the road safer for others. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to those who are road ragers, who get very angry and start, uh, you know, uh, abusing others on the road? Because sometimes, uh, you know, uh, an innocent driver is just driving and not knowingly would have uh, made some other driver on the road angry. And then you know how, how those cases turn out. Okay, you have to tone down your anger already because uh, today people have dash cameras and most of the brand new cars are come with dash cameras front and back and you'll become very famous and your yes, people will put media your will yes, you. social media and the police are coming after your tail so you have to be very very careful you have to control your anger because each time you get anger, angry with people you just show them like that that's good for you you know <laughs> for driving that you know yeah. at least you feel satisfied you know yeah don't fight uh, anger with anger yeah. just show them the thumbs up 
very very good well thank you so much captain sure. for all your time um, before we finish today's uh, episode i did want to actually highlight a story that happened many years ago where you had uh, you were in the right place right time of course being fully equipped with your knowledge you were able to save someone's life someone who was trying to come down from a tall building tell us that story before we end today's show i was conducting training in a in a high rise building and somebody ran to my auditorium they told me that there was a mate tried to commit suicide so when i went down there she was on the 13th floor uh and i saw a, a cloth uh, uh not to each other and i know that she don't want to commit suicide if she want to commit suicide she would have just jumped why would she use a strap i know she want to escape so by looking at it i actually don't want to scream because by screaming to her my echo will cause a panicky situation right because if you told her jangan lompat the echo only reach up there lompat so she may confuse and she may just jump down all right so i run to the 14th floor when i reach 14th floor i cannot reach speak her. because i was panting <laughs> <laughs> so i get people to help me so i actually use a rope i came down from the 14th floor my initial intention actually to break the glass and push her inside so that she can be secured but unfortunately uh, people were down there watching the incident if i were to break the glass the glass will hit somebody that's why sometimes when the rescuers helping somebody we shouldn't be just a bystander there because uh, the rescuer have proper equipment a uh, protection but the the pass by who stand there don't have protection and they just stand there watching the whole a rescue show. operation it's not a show yeah, yeah. so when the glass fell they're going to get injured so it takes i actually grab her and bring her down to the level 12 and go through the window fen Fantastic. Hi. Thank you so yeah. much captain for all the great work that you do sure. and for always always being so you know forthcoming with the, the knowledge and the information to share with the public. So it we have had a very good conversation today and I hope that all of you at home have actually taken down all the pointers and for more information you can always go to rsmc.org.my uh, to get more uh, information on how to always always be uh, ahead of the game be safe. Then that's all the time we have today. Have a wonderful day ahead and uh, Uh, thank you so much once thank again thank you so much thank yeah. you Correct. see yeah. you have a great weekend bye bye